Hello everyone and welcome back to part two of my top favorites watercolor colors. Today we are going to be looking at 12 more colors ranging from deep blues to muted granulating greens. If you missed part one, pause this video, watch that one first, then join us back here to continue through the list. The first video will explain the setup for this whole series, how I'm painting the swatches, and all of that fun stuff and be sure to subscribe to be notified when the next one comes out as well. Let's jump right into it today. There's no surprise here that my first few single pigment blues on the list are pretty standard picks. Indenthrine Blue PB60 by Da Vinci is an indispensable color for me these days. It's an invaluable mixer playing nicely with just about any other color it meets. My first favorite version of PB60 was M. Graham's Anthroquinone Blue for its vibrance. A bit after that, I came to the conclusion that I was happy with any brands except for Daniel Smith because their version leans closer to gray and is less saturated. However, after trying several in my collection, Da Vinci's did end up on top of my list when I was planning for this video. It is the most rich and saturated of the bunch. However, Schmincke's Delft Blue is also another great option. Perhaps the most boring color on this entire list is Ultramarine Blue PB29. So sorry, Ultramarine. Uh, despite being rather unoriginal, Ultramarine is a workhorse and one that I really can't imagine not having on a fully functional palette. For a mixing palette, I do prefer a less granulating version of this particular color. I often reach for Da Vinci's Ultramarine Blue seen here, or Sennelier's Ultramarine Deep. Of course, as many of you already know, Ultramarine is great for mixing natural greens, pretty purples, and lovely neutrals. My camera and scanner did not get along great with this next color, but I've adjusted the final scans to the best of my ability to represent what the color looks like in person. Thalo Turquoise PB16 is a gorgeous deep turquoise teal color. It is the cool blue on my palette these days, long ago replacing the more common used Thalo Blue. This version is from Windsor and Newton, which has a beautifully rich mass tone. However, Da Vinci's version is easier to rewet when poured from a tube into a pan, though it does have slightly less intensity when it dries on the paper. The next two colors go hand in hand, and I'm still not sure if I made the right decision by keeping them both, but here's my explanation. First up is Cerulean Blue PB36 by M. Graham. Alternatively, Cerulean Blue Genuine from Da Vinci or Cerulean Blue Deep from M. Graham would also work well in this spot. The purpose of this color is to be a smooth, less granulating light blue that plays well in mixes. This is the type of cerulean that was used when making Denise's gray. However, I also adore a more red leaning granulating cerulean when it's used on its own. For that reason, I have also included Cerulean Blue Warm Shade PB35 by Windsor & Newton. Cobalt Azure from Schmincke and Cobalt Colon from Roman Schmal also work well in this spot. Time will tell if I end up using both of these ceruleans and I'll be sure to keep you updated if anything changes. Let me know which one is your favorite cerulean in the comments below. I almost didn't include a cobalt teal on this list in favor of another dark neutral later on. However, this unique bright tropical blue won out in the end. This particular version is called Cobalt Turquoise and it's made from PG50 by Schmincke. So do note that most brands would call this color Cobalt Teal. It is not the deeper version of Cobalt Turquoise that we'll see in just a moment. When it comes to this hue, I don't have a strong brand preference or even a preference between if it's made from PG50 or PB28 like M. Graham's version. Schmincke's just dries better in a pan than M. Graham's version does. Next, we have a more accurately called Cobalt Turquoise made from PB36 from Da Vinci. It is a deeper, less vibrant turquoise, and Da Vinci and Roman Schmal carry my favorite versions of this color. 
Schwenke's cobalt green turquoise follows close behind those other two, but it leans a little bit more towards yellow than the one that you're seeing here. I really fell in love with this pigment while working on my Embrace Opacity palette and definitely wanted to include it here. Forest Blue is probably the most useful color that I have found in Schmika's entire super granulation line. It looks rather unassuming in these swatches, but it is such a lovely color to desaturate other colors with, so the convenience color is worthwhile for me to keep on the palette. It is made from PB36, which I'm guessing is a turquoise version of that pigment, rather than a cerulean, and PBK11, which is Mars Black. It's another nice one to use in value studies. And in fact, I used it for a demo project in my most recent ebook on monochromatic and analogous value studies in watercolor. If you haven't seen that yet, I'll leave a link in the description below. Next is Cobalt Green Deep PG26 by Windsor and Newton, though I also like Roman Schmalls and Schmincke's versions as well. It's no surprise that I love my desaturated granulating swampy greens and this is the most blue leaning among them. I love the granulation both on its own and when it lends itself to other mixes. Florentine Green is a unique PG-17 by Stoneground and is my ride or die green these days. I love this color so much that I think we might have accidentally started a cult following for it. Most PG-17s, chromium oxide green, are lighter, brighter, more opaque, and less granulating than this version. This color is still plenty opaque, but it has a natural earthiness to it that is just gorgeous straight out of the pan, and it requires no mixing whatsoever. The unique granulation makes it perfect for background splashes for a lot of my animal portraits. Forest Gray by Schminka is a newcomer to this palette and one that I'm not sure if it's gonna stay around for the long term. It is made from PBR7, PBK11, and PG50. I could probably mix a similar color by adding a warm light brown to the aforementioned Florentine Green. However, this paint caught my eye in one of our recent super granulation swatching videos, and I'm super curious to see how it does on the full palette, and I will keep you posted. Another super granulation color from Schminke, Desert Green, is made from PG26 and PR108. This is probably the most niche and difficult colors to use on this entire palette, and it's the only color on the palette that contains a cadmium color. However, it is just so much fun to use. While it may not be universally helpful, it brings me a lot of joy, so for the time being, it can stick around. I love using it for reptile studies, and as the name suggests, it works well in a lot of desert landscapes too. And just like that, we have completed another set of 12 colors in this top 48 color marathon, showcasing my favorite watercolor colors in 2023. Let me know what your favorite blues and greens are in watercolors, and be sure to subscribe to check back next week for our next batch of colors as we head into more greens, earth yellows, and mid-valued browns. Thank you so much for watching and engaging with this video. Thank you to my amazing patrons, and I will see you all next time. Until then, happy painting.